Hello there! Now we're going to go into resistivity, the last subtopic of chapter 9. Previously, we looked at current in conductor, right? In the metal wire, why got electron, why the electron flow cause current. And we looked at things like drift velocity. And last video, we looked at graphs of conductor. You got a current in the conductor, and you have a potential difference. How does the graph look like? The IV curves law for different, different kind. But we want to focus just on metallic conductors. So today, the goal is, we're going to learn about this thing. What is this? R equals to rho L over A. That is what we call the resistivity equation because it has resistivity inside. Resistivity is our rho. And we're going to look at different ideas, how you can sketch and interpret graphs. There's a lot of graphs you can draw based on this thing. And then there'll be a part two video after this, kind of like a bonus, but talking about some of the most challenging MCQs. So this is just part one to get you familiarized and refresher of what resistivity is. Okay, question is, so you have a metallic conductor, right? It could be like a metal piece, it could be a wire. What affects its resistance? All this while we just, is given to us, ma. 5 ohm, 5 ohm resistor, then you calculate, long. 6 ohm, 6 ohm, long. But there are ways you can change the resistivity, sorry, the resistance of the conductor. And resistivity is one of the things that affect it. So say here got wire law. Um, so resistivity is a property of the material itself. Metal got one resistivity. Gold got one resist re 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 resistivity. There's also other uh, factors that can affect it. So here, if people ask you what is resistivity, you can basically explain resistivity is resistance with unit cross-section area and length. So these are some of the properties that will affect the resistance. First, you have resistivity, you have area, and you have length. What is that? Uh? Uh, area is basically this one here, cross-section area. Okay. If it's a square, it's a square. If it's a circle, it's a circle. Uh, resistivity is just the material itself, Okay, based on electron configuration, all those chemistry stuff. Uh, and then length is how long is this thing? Now, I want you to think about the relationship between these few. <clears throat> if you change the length or longer, will the resistance increase or decrease? Imagine you're walking through a tunnel, it's very crowded, but you have to walk a very, very long tunnel. Would you call it more resistance or less? I don't think it's more. Okay, so we'll say, hmm, resistance will increase with length. That's the relationship. Put a little box here. When, uh, when length increase, resistance should increase. Okay. Um, how about A, cross-section area? If you are in a very narrow, small tunnel and you are all trying to squeeze through it versus the same number of people but in a very big tunnel and you're all travelling, you are the electron travelling in the conductor. How do you think that will affect the resistance if I increase the area? The bigger the area, actually the lesser the resistance. Because more space, ma, you don't you won't have to squash so much and fight with each other. Hit each other, la bum here, bum there. Hey, excuse me, sorry, excuse me. Then you walk, walk, walk. Okay, so two ideas already. Then this resistivity, what is that? Okay, la, that one never mind. I'll let you know. Resistivity is another point. But anyway, based on these two, we have resistance. We can make equation already, by the way. Resistance. Depends on length. Okay, so length, but inversely proportional to area. So, something like that. The third one, the new one we looked at is resistivity. Resistivity actually goes right here. Means the higher your resistivity, the higher your resistance. Resistivity, ma. So, resistivity, how much it resists. That's depending on the element or the the chemical compound itself that is the metallic conductor. Did I say compound? Chemical, whatever. La, the, you know, la, the stuff inside here, electron, how many, all those things like that. So this is the mother equation of this whole unit. I'm going to box this up. This is super important. And we can use that to define resistivity by just rearranging. So you rearrange, you have resistivity then will be Ra over L. That's how you define resist resistivity. And people do experiments to find what the resistivity is. Okay, so basically what the definition up there says is if you have uh, a 
uh, wire or conductor or whatever it is with a cross-section area of 1 meter and a length of 1 meter, that means you will have a resistivity of 1 R or whatever that is, R. Lo. Resistivity will be R. Lo. If you put 2 ohm, then 2 ohm meter is your resistivity. Okay? I'll let you sink, soak that in a little bit. Okay. Now, now, now. What are actual values? I'm going to go some examples. I think I put a table here. Ah, God. Okay, so in case you're like, oh, what miss? What is this resistivity? So, if I fix the temperature at 20 degree, you do the experiment, you measure the wire, take micrometer, measure uh, diameter, calculate area, measure length, uh, what else? And you you measure the resistance of the that wire by using M meter, volt meter, you will get a bunch of resistivity values like the ones here. Okay, notice these are a lot of the things that we use in wire and electronics, your calculator, your phone, your charger. Mostly we use copper wires because it's the cheapest. But the lowest resistivity is actually, wow, silver is pretty low but very expensive. So cannot use for wire after everyone steal your wire. So we usually use copper. And notice the prefix is usually 10, negative 8, negative 6, negative 7, somewhere there. This is important when they ask you to estimate. Estimate the resistivity of copper. Then out of the blue, you have to try and think. Oh, resistivity of, resistivity of metallic conductor is roughly around 10, negative 8, plus, minus 1. Okay? So, that's that. All right. Some key points before we go to examples. This one is important because I want you to know this. If you look at the conductor on the right, let me wrap up all these guesses. Uh, is the current flowing through this conductor the same everywhere? What I mean is, if I connect this to a circuit, here go in, this become a resistor lah, basically. Go out. Current. Yeah, we know that a current enter it, then the current must come out. Ma. Current is just how many electrons, uh, how many charges per second. But inside the, inside this conductor, is the current the same? Answer is yes. Actually, you have current flowing through this thing also. Same value. Remember, uh, current is same. Write down somewhere a reminder. Current, same, through, conductor. Because your charges cannot just disappear or appear out of nowhere, ma. Okay la, okay la. The other graph that I want you to know, which will be helpful when we do other graph questions later, is the one that's related to this. Let's say I add, let's say I connect this to a circuit, something like that la. 12 volts. Okay. So that means uh, the charges will come here, dump all the energy in this conductor, and then... At the end, let's say this potential is V0 volts. That means at the top here, you know, like the animations that we look at, you start at the top, you drop down, potential drop, potential difference. So you start off at 12 and you drop to 0. How would the graph look like if I asked you to sketch the potential difference across the distance x? Here is x equals 0. Huh? What does that mean? Okay, okay. That means... If I take a voltmeter, I put one side here, I put the other side here. What is the potential difference? 12. Okay, so you start off with 12. Then, if I move the wire a bit, I put it here. I would have traveled some distance x already. So you take the voltmeter, long, you measure, 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 measure as you get shorter and shorter. How would the graph look like? Let's drop this one. Ah. So you move a bit already, you measure, then you take out the voltmeter, you plug it somewhere in there. This is how it will look for potential drop. Don't worry, we have more practice question with this. If you measure the across the full conductor, you will get 12 volts. If you measure until the end already, it should be down to zero. Lah. But as you go along, you will have a linear decrease in your potential drop across the resistor. Why is that? Well, because you do think of, okay, so R is rho L over A. A is constant. Same material, so rho is constant. L is changing. Your L is getting shorter and shorter because yeah, effectively you are measuring it shorter and shorter. Ma. So your L is decreasing. 
That means your x is increasing when your r is decreasing. Okay, as your x increase, your resistance will decrease because your length is getting shorter and shorter. But we want v, so you think of uh, v equals i r. Aha, uh -huh, this one. So as resistance decrease, voltage drop will also decrease. Okay, so that means as your x, you go out on the axis, your v will also decrease, which is why we have this linearly decreasing graph. And this linearly is because area, everything else is constant. So this is a FYI, if you ever see this voltage graph, this is how it looks like. Okay, sorry, I blocked the v, i, r behind me. Lah. Okay, so that's, a, that's all you need to know for this subtopic. Everything else is application. So let's go to applications. Let's look at what the first question is. Here on page 61, we have ON14, P21. It's a pretty good interdisciplinary, uh, what you call this, question. But what this question is doing is, it's telling you what you would do in an experiment. For example, long time ago in some lab, you all did an experiment on resistivity. You probably don't remember that. Or hopefully you got a chance to do it wherever you are in your college. But yeah. Anyway, so here, take some time to read this one. But before you do it, I want to explain a little bit what the experiment is. Okay, so recap of your lab experiment that you maybe did before. You have a battery. Connect to a conductor or it can be a wire, lah, basically any wire, any metal, any piece of ruler. That's okay. Then on the other end of the battery, we're going to connect to what we call a flying lead means it's just a, a loose part of the wire you can poke here, poke there one. So this one, you can move it around, you just stick it out, but well, you can poke it here, you can poke it at the end, but now nah, I'm just going to poke it here. Lah. So what you're doing is you're changing the effective length. So length will just be from here to here, the length of the conductor. Okay, so then you will measure other things like, okay, lor, measure the current in the circuit, measure the potential difference wherever you poke it, between those two points, you measure the potential difference. Huh? So you change the length. And then you measure the resistance. Or you calculate the resistance, I should say. Sorry. V equals I R. So you can measure V, measure I, you can calculate R. And then you take all kinds of data points. No? Draw a nice best fit line. Okay, good to know. Now how will we do this question? I want you to tr go try it out, find the past here. Give yourself maximum 10 minutes at most to try out all A, B, C, D first and then you come back and then we look and see. It's a good review of chapter 2 also. So yeah, pause the video, try out first. Maximum uh, 10 minutes. Alrighty, so hopefully you got to do that. Please do that, uh, don't just sit here, stare at the video. Uh, unless you can work really, really fast as I do this. Anyway, so the purpose of the experiment is to determine the resistivity of the wire thing that I just draw here. So this resistivity. How? What is the resistivity of that material? Material is specific for the material. Okay, first one. Ooh, interesting question. The points don't lie on the best fit line. Why? Suggest a reason for this. Hmm. If you look at the the, the line, oh, I pasted it here because very very fun to scroll back. You see, it's like a little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit down, a little bit up. This is what we call a scatter in the data. Ah, where have we heard that before? Precision. Scatter in the data. Why is there a scatter in the data? When you see all this, your data in labs, in paper tree or anywhere, it's scattered around, means you have random error in your data. We try our best to reduce those, but sometimes really cannot help. So how you want to say this? If you mention somewhere in your writing that there's random error, that's a keyword that we want to find. So random error... I can say in measurements well. Measurements of what? V and I. Can la? Oh, you just say in measurements can already. Because the keyword here they're looking for is random. Scatter, dotted one is because of random error. So that's the uh, first one. B1 mark. Okay, sure. One mark for that one. Now we come to the lab part. How do you determine the gradient of the line? Please remember how to determine gradient. You just choose two points on. Huh? The best way to do this is you choose, let me zoom in, you can choose any point on the line, but 
best to choose the one where it cross in the corner one. So, like, maybe, let me see, where is the, what's a good point? Which one cross the corner? This one, no, 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 uh, this one looks kind of good. So let's choose that as one point. Pick this point. Okay, I just mark it first. Huh? Then you have to choose as far as you can. Choose a triangle as big as possible. Somewhere where you cross the corner. Uh, this one is good. Then in labs, usually you will have to draw a big, big, big triangle. More than half of the line length. And then you do your calculation point loss. Okay, you choose this point, choose this point. I chose 0 0.8. 3.6 and then the other one is 1.9 and 0 0.4. You can choose other data points. If you choose a very, very good corner point, then your answer will be very, very accurate. So anyway, gradient, change in y over change in x on the y-axis. So my data point, I chose 3.6, 1.9. You can choose different one, 0 0.8, 0 0.4. Press calculator, you should get 4.25. What's a unit? Ah? Gradient got unit one. Ah? God. God. Your y-axis is ohm. Your x-axis is what? Length. Ah. It got cut off. Ah. Yes, it's length. It's supposed to be a length here. So, ohm over m. So, you must write also. Lo. I know this one no need, lah, but it's good practice. This one is ohms. These ones are meters. So your unit will be ohm per meter. Mm, don't forget, it. they are units too. First one comes from the mark. Uh, the mark comes from you knowing how to find gradient, two points, minus. And then if your answer is reasonable within like, I think 4.3 or 4.2, they will accept. Lah. But this one, oh, it depends on marks. One. Different year, some year very strict, some year very not strict. So... Make sure you practice choosing the points in the corner. Now, now, I'm just going to write 2SF two, two here. Now we come to the part where you have to calculate stuff. They give us cross-section area. This is our A. Determine resistivity. So find rho. Do you have all the information? Ah? Maybe. We have to remember our equation. R equals to rho L over A. Use your answer in B. Means they say use your gradient. Ah. So they want to see you that you know how to use gradient. Okay. So in our graph, just now we, we saw, we have R on the y-axis and L on the x-axis. This is our, basically our x and y. La. So if you want to rearrange this to the format of a straight line, y equals to mx, then you have y equals to m is your gradient, whatever that is, times your x, which is L in this case. So rho over A, lo. So that means this row over A is your gradient. Which is the value you found just now, uh, 4.25 or whatever your value is. So your gradient, row over A, is your 4.25 gradient. I just say gradient. This is a skill you must have for paper 3 or so. So it's good to review this. Now you calculate. Uh, so resistivity will be the cross-section area. 0.12. Yo, milli, uh, millimeter must change. So milli is negative 3, but because it's millimeter square, you have to square this uh, times 4.25. So what you get? Well, I got about 5.1 times 10, negative 7. You may get slightly different depending on your gradient, but you can want to aim for 5.1 when you run off to 2SF. So this one, three marks more. First mark comes from, you know this equation or not? R equals to rho L, rho L over A. If you do, you get that. Second one comes from, how, do you know how to use the gradient to find or not? Ah, so that one they will look for if you know how to use um, your area times gradient. Okay, then they'll give you a C1 or no? then the last one is accuracy mark for final answer. It's like a paper tree question basically. But in a uh, paper 2 format. Hmm. Okay. Anyway. Third one. Sketch graph. Oh, I love sketching graph. But I also don't love sketching graph. Because you either get it completely wrong or you get it right. Because so easy to draw line. 
but also so hard. You draw the correct line or not. The resistance of different wire is measured. Oh, now there's different wire already. The wire, same metal. Okay, same metal means you have the same resistivity for both metal. This is a fact. Because resistivity depends on the material. Ma. Same length. Okay, so you have same L. But different cross-section area. Oh, so now this one is changing. So what we have now is you have the same setup, but you are changing the wire. So first one is a very thin wire, then you poke, 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 measure. Then you put a very fat wire, big cross-section area. Then you poke, 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 and then you measure. So there's two ones, so you measure. So how would the R resistance look if you change A? Variation of A with R. Don't panic. When you see R and A, it's likely related to resistivity. So write this down first. We only want to look at how R and A relate. So we check, is everything else constant? Ah? Check and see. Ah. L, or oh, we same L. Okay, so this one is constant. Resistivity, same metal. Okay, so constant. Therefore, you can say R is proportional to 1 over A. And that is the only thing that is changing here. Proportional means basically inversely proportional. Lah. So your inversely proportional will look something like this. Don't touch the axis. Why don't touch the axis? Because this oh, is kind of sketching the graph of y equals to 1 over x. This 1 over x guy is like those inversely proportional kind of graph. Lah. You will never touch the axis one. These are called asymptotes. So make sure you have a curvy curvy line. Where do these two marks come from? First one, if your R is decreasing, whether it's a straight line or a curve, as long as it's decreasing, you get one mark already. So, okay, we got that. It's decreasing. Then the second one is, they check your curve. They want it to be a curve and not touching asymptotes. Means not touching the x-axis, not touching the y-axis. They will check that. So they check, okay, don't touch, don't touch. Okay, can lah. So, two marks for this one. Ooh. So this is the experiment how people determine resistivity. Find V, find I, plot graph, find gradient. And you will do this also maybe in one of your paper tree or lab practicals in college. Okay, so that's a good starter. Let's look at one more question about graphs. On page 23, you will see this question if you have the handout or just go to find this past year, page 23. Now, this one is an interesting one. It just now we look at only the same size, right? Now you see it's like got steps one. It's big cross-section area and then it gets smaller and then smaller. So how do you solve this kind of thing? Try take a guess first. I don't see the answer straight away. Try look at the thing. Try to see which graph makes sense. They are looking for the graph of y, uh, V against Y. What are all these? Okay, I, I run you through the question first. Three wires in series. All the same metal, different cross-section area. There's a current in the conductor. So current is the same throughout. Current here is the same I. Current is sun. Current, current, current. I am not the right lah. Current is the same. But they want the potential war. Hmm. This remember, reminds me of the first slide we looked at. So if I say potential here at this end is zero. And here you have, of course, lah, some big V. Law. Here is zero V. Then how will the, the potential change with distance as you move from left to right? How? Take a guess. Choose one. If you need more time, pause the video because huh? I'm going to discuss it now. So before this, we talk about, oh, if it's just uniform, you just V over X. Like that, oh, straight line come down. But then, you see here, every single diameter is changing. So it's not going to be a straight line anymore. You see, there's going to be steps. Question is, is it steps or is it line, line, line like this? The answer is, it's not steps. Because, let's say here you have 12 volts. Let's say, la, I create a value. If you measure between 0 and here, it would have dropped a bit already. Maybe become 10. You measure between 0 and here, become 11.5. So it's actually dropping continuously. So it's not steps. This one means 
the first section, then suddenly it dropped. First section dropped. Now, now, now. Actually, actually, it slowly changes. So as you move, the potential difference between here and ground is dropping already. So it's either A or B. Now, how do you decide whether it's A or B? The gradient of the graph. How? How do you decide that? A quick reminder, we have R equals to rho L over A, right? But we also know V equals to IR. So we can say R is V over I equals to rho L over A. And I only want to look at, I guess, V and L. La. So zoom into that. V proportional to L. Eh, not V and L, sorry. V and A. Ah. A, A, A. Okay, so V proportional to 1 over A. Means as the area gets smaller and smaller, what's going to happen? Oh, two things changing, wall, you say, miss. How? L here are also changing. Oh. Area getting smaller, yes. But also, your length is getting shorter because your effective length is between your zero point and wherever you are putting the voltmeter, that's your length. So how? Ah? Two things changing or how we know whether V is increasing or decreasing or decreasing how? I th v is decreasing, of course. Lah. Yes, it's decreasing. But both graph also A and B also give decreasing. So how you decide? Well, you need to look at the resistance. The resistance goes like this. For this big, big one, or the first chunk here, the cross-section area is quite big. Means it has the smallest resistance. And also, on the right side, this one very narrow. So this one has the largest resistance. Hmm. Okay. So very small resistance means you will only have a very small potential drop across it. So look at this one. Okay, so the first one, you kind of drop from here to here. That's your first section. Here you drop from here to here. Oh, very small. And then compare it with the last part. You drop from here to here, and you drop from here to here. So small resistance means small potential drop. Oh, so that means probably is A. Lor. And then at the end there, wow, very large resistance. So very large potential drop. So that one, you'll want to choose A for this case. Wow, to look by case by case, see which one makes more sense. Now let's look at more paper 2 questions to practice calculating and understanding Resistivity in terms of conductor when it's inside a circuit. Okay. Previously, remember we say wires, we assume no resistance. That's not always true. Some wires do have resistance. So, oh yeah, that's the problem. Lah. That's why we have all this extra thing. Okay, let's look at this one. It's on page 56. ON 13P21. Question 6. Um, can we work this together with you? Well, I can... Well... I want you to try it out first. Let me calculate, see how long you need. How much, how many total mark is this? 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1. 12, okay. Huh? 12 marks are really are so long. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Woohoo! 12 marks question. So, <clears throat> you can take up to 15 minutes because... 12 marks times 1.25 uh, minute per mark. So roughly 15 minutes. Lor. So take maximum 15 minutes to try this out first. It's okay if you feel stuck. Don't don't check the bus. You try to think about it. But if you are halfway you're like, okay, you think you're done already. It's okay. Come back and see how to solve this one. All right, let's see. First one, start off with the definition. Good, like normal. Potential difference, what is that? It's based on, definition is based on W equals QV. So the short, there's two ways to define this. The shorter one is just to say, potential difference <coughs> is the work done per unit charge. You can say, yeah, per unit charge. If you want to say the long version, then you will say, you will be using the energy transfer per unit charge, so the energy transfer per unit charge from electrical to non-electrical, 
around the whole circuit. But never mind, la, we use the short version today. La. Okay, la, okay. One mark here. B1. That is how you can define potential difference. Eh, hang now. <laughs> anyway. And then we come to this power supply and some zero internal. What is this circuit thing? Check and see. Okay, read through that. 240 volt, zero internal resistance. That's important. So we don't have to worry about internal resistance. Heater. This one is the heater. Okay, la. What, what are we supposed to do with this thing? Okay, check the bottom part. The wire used to connect the heater have length. Ah, let me redraw the circuit because it's up there. So the circuit goes like this. We have power supply, wire, heater, back to power supply. Circuit must be a loop. Ah. Closed circuit only it will flow. If not, it won't flow. Current won't flow. So we have wires. Each wire length is 75 meters. And they have cross-section area A. I just write there lah. Resistivity and the heater have resistance 38 ohm. Show that the resistance of each wire is 0 0.54. So when you see resistivity, when you see this keyword, probably it's related to R equals to rho L over A. Can we do we have enough information to do this? Ah? Each wire or oh, resistance of each wire. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Rho given to us. Yes. Yes. 18. Don't forget, n ohm meter is nano. Ah. So, 10, 18 times 10 to the negative 9. That is our prefix. Length, 75 meters. Mm, do we want to use 75 or use something else? Ah, 75, ah, 75. 75 meter. Cross-section area is 2.5 milli. So, must put times 10 to the negative 3, but millimeter square so I must square that also okay calculate that you should get if no calculator problem 0 0.54 ohm are you very small any good la wire you don't want a lot of resistance ma uh, three marks for this first one is from your equation they see you know how to use this or not do you even know the equation c1 then they see you plug in values plug in correct or not and then lastly your final answer though, 0 0.54 Okay, still not too bad. It's more of a direct calculation thing. Then they ask us, calculate current in the wire. Heh? What current in the wire? Oh yes, there's current in the wire. Calculate current, we want to think of voltage, current, resistance. What's the relationship between these three? Now, don't just use 38 ohms for resistance, ah, because now your wire you just calculated got resistance. So, Effectively, these wires here are like resistors or so, kind of. And they each have a resistance of 0 0.54 ohm, 0 0.54 ohm. So, you need to include those also. So, if my VIR here, I'm going to use for V total and R total. So, the total potential drop across the wire, the, the wire, the um, heater and this other wire will be 240, which is also the potential supply. So we have 240 equals to some current. I have this thing can go away or not. And total resistance. So you have the heater, you have one wire, and you have another wire. Because they're acting like resistors in series. Ah, don't forget the other two. So calculate your current. You should get 6.14 amps. If you forgot, the others, make sure you mark that down. But for this, uh, first mark comes from you knowing your V equals IR. Do you know V equals IR? Yes. Yes, then you can give yourself a C1. The second mark comes from the total resistance and plugging in the correct value. That's over here, C1. Especially pay attention to this part. If you did a mistake here, make a note. Okay. Then the last one, final answer, 6.14. In my answer line, I'm gonna I gonna run off to <coughs> six point one <lah. coughs> But in your working space, you can keep more decimals. In fact, I encourage you because later you will use this to calculate more things. Okay, then the third one: power loss in the wires. So just now we have current. We know everything. So actually, all these wires or oh, they will get a bit hot. 
they will release some energy at a certain rate and that's what we call power loss. So what is the power loss here, including the one down here? Both of it, lah. they say both. Ma. Then you think of your power equation. Which one to use? Ah? P equals IV, P equals IR, I squared R, P, V, R. So many. You can use P equals IV, you can use P equals I squared R, or you can use P equals V squared over R. They're all the same thing. Change here and there because of Ohm's law on it. I'm going to choose to use P equals to I squared R. Because if I want to find V across, potential draw across both wire, extra work for me. Okay lah. So I just find the current through the whole thing, which I already did, 6.14. Now what do I use for the resistance here? Here we're talking about wires. So there's two wires. So one wire is 0 0.54. Two wires is two of it lah. So you want to include 0 0.54, but there's two wires. So 0 0.54 ohm times 2. That will be the total power loss for both wires. You can count both separately and add also, lah, but this is a shortcut. Calculate everything properly. You should get about 40.71 watts. I leave more, no more, more decimal here, but in my final answer area, I can write 41. Yeah, you can round to 41 there. 2 SF. Three marks. First one, do you know your power equation? Second one, do you plug in stuff properly, especially this one where you have to do times two? And last one, do you press calculator correctly or not? Three marks. Okay. Power loss. The final one need you to explain. A lot of uh, paper two question run like this because they will say they will either ask you to explain or draw a graph. So you have calculation, definition, and explanation in every answer. Or in every question. So make sure you have mastered all three kinds of skills. Law. Can explain, can calculate, can draw graph, can define. Alright, here what's the problem now? Wire is replaced, oh different wire now, same length and material. So you have the same L, same resistivity, but different cross-section area. What's the effect on power loss in the wires? This one you kind of have to think a little carefully. Here, I redraw once again, you have your wires which are basically have a resistance of it. This is 0 0.54 or never mind. Let me just leave it blank. So when you change the wire, or how does the resistance change? Before it's 0 0.54, now become what already? Because to find power loss, or you need to know how the resistance change, ma. So what you could do is, it's the first step. Figure out how does R change. R here depends on rho L over A. What's different? Same L, same P. A is changing. Okay, okay, okay. So here when your R A area, is it decrease or increase? Previously is 2.5. Oh, so it dropped. Dropped by how many times? Before this was? Let's check. Ah, there. 25, 2.5 mm. Drop until 0 0.5. How many times is that? Let me check. 2.5 over 0 0.5 is... What's the ratio? 5 times more. So it means your A is decreasing by 5 times. That means your resistance should also increase. Not also. Should, because it is inversely proportional relationship. So this one should increase by 5 times. Let's write that as our first sentence. So, area decreases. Oh, you know why I have to explain or not? Because state and explain now got two command words here. So don't just say power will increase. You must say why power increase. That's why we talk about area. Area decreases, you can say five times. So, your resistance will increase. Five times. That's our first, that's our explanation. Then we now need to think about power. Power loss. How does that affect that? So now your resistance is bigger already. Power? Five times ah, or more? Well, don't know power or not. How ah, how to explain? Power loss. Well, to calculate power loss, we need P. Should I use I? No, I don't want to think about current. Current is changing a lot. 
That leaves us with V squared over R. Then how leh? How to think about this? V and R, we want to find P. The shortest way is to use ratio of V and R because <coughs> current will be very much fun to calculate. So your R is increasing. What happens to the potential drop across, let's say, one of these resistors? Like that. Or wire. I keep saying resistor. Well, to think about it, your heater still got 38 ohm constant. But your two resistance is getting bigger and bigger. So that means they'll be taking a bigger share of the potential. Remember potential share out ma. If you have how many volts is this? 240 volts. Okay, like we draw the circuit one more time. 240 volts. Now you have wire, heater, wire. Heater is just 38 ohms. But this one, the R is increasing, this one, the R also increasing. So that means oh, they will take more and more of the potential drop. Okay, share, share. Ma. <coughs> Bigger resistance, you take more potential. La. You need more energy. Nah, nah, nah. Take, take, take. So then, increase, increase, increase. Therefore, how? Ah? Your R resistance is increasing. Potential drop also increase. So that means more power loss. Lo. So you, want to ex you can say that statement. Therefore, you already say resistance increased 5 times, right? So therefore, potential drop or potential across one of the wires is greater. Because you have more resistance, you take more of the share in the ratio. So, more power loss or power loss greater. Yeah, that's how you can talk about it. Two marks, one is your state, you say more power loss or power loss is greater. That one is your state. But you need to explain. So that's a method mark that must come before that. Uh, state and explain usually is the M1, A1. Uh. So here you say law area decrease, resistance increase. Okay, law, that's your method mark. In, in this case, the mark scheme is quite generous. If you didn't say five times, also okay. So M1, A1, two marks for this one. There we go. So this is one question where you have calculation, explain, and all kinds of stuff. Now the final question for this video, I won't do the whole thing because it'll be quite long if I do it. It's on page 70. MJ16 P21. This one, this one. Uh, the first part, I'll leave it blank like you can go check. They ask you to define, then they say you have to be able to prove this equation, how you get the drift velocity equation okay this is from way back the first unit go and revise how to do it if you forget ready okay so a and b go try it out by yourself from c onwards i'll show you some examples i don't think i'll do all of it if you want to give yourself a test first you can give yourself eight minutes to do part c onwards it's all about ratios ratio of this over this equation this over this equation it's pretty much the same thing just repeating 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 Okay, so 8 minutes, try it out, and then let's check through our ratios if we did this correctly. So here we have a circuit, negligible internal resistance. Oh, thank you. No need to worry about that. Two resistors, Y and Z. Okay, what next? Here, here. Uh, average drift speed. I won't do that one. I'll let you go try it out. Check your answers with the mark scheme, but reminder... When you see the word drift speed, you will want to think of the Nave equation. So I equals to Nave. V here is the drift speed of the charge carriers in your conductor. Okay, so go try this one out. How to do that? I give you an idea. You want drift speed, right? So you rearrange. I over NAE. So then, whenever you see ratio questions, you do separately, no? Drift speed in Y divided by drift speed in Z. What is the equation? You plug in and then you cancel, cancel, cancel. All the things that are same. Okay, so I'll leave that one blank. Go try that one first. I want to go to the resistance part in 2. Show that the resistance of Y over resistance of Z is 2. Hmm. Let's see what information we have. When you see resistance, think of your 
row L over A kind of thing. Or if you want to change the diameter, row L over pi D square over 4. So I put the 4 on top. So here when you see this, again ratio, you find separately no, resistance of Y, what is resistance of Z. In terms of equation only. Ah. So Y, you check through, your diameter is given. Everything is given. So here will be same material, so rho. What's the length given to us? Length L. So you just write L, small l. And then pi, diameter is D. Okay, lor. so just like that, lor. pi L over D. That's the equation for the top part. Resistance of Z, it will be a little bit different. Same material, but the length is 2 times wall. So 2L pi, I forgot the square here. Diameter is 2 times the diameter. So it's double fat. Double as fat. If I simplify this a bit, I'll get 2 rho L over 4 pi D square. Oh, so you see, we got a little difference there. Now, once you have the top and bottom separate, then you do your ratio thing. Ry divided by Rz. Ry, you will have rho L over pi D square. Rz, we already listed 2 rho L over 4 pi D square. Then now you can see which one can cancel out, which one cannot cancel out. Resistivity is same for both, oh, so cancel. The L here is the small L, which is the same for both. D is D law, pi is pi law. So what is left left? Only the numbers. So what you have left is 2 over 4, which is then equals to, well, 1 over 2 over 4 is 2. So that means the ratio is 2. This one, only 2 marks. So don't spend too much time listing out everything. If you can practice cancelling out stuff very quickly, <clears throat> that's good. So here, if you know your equation, you either see this one or this one, you already get a B1 mark. Then straight away you see two, then A1 already. Lor. Okay? So don't spend too much time listing out the whole equation thing. Now what does this resistance thing mean? Let me redraw the circuit because that will be needed for part three. Now the circuit light again. You have battery, resistor, resistor, back to battery. Ah yeah, why my line so sang it? Okay, this is Y, this is Z. Now they ask us determine the potential difference across Y. How to find potential difference across Y? Nah, we're trying to do this. Take both meter measure here. So we're trying to basically find what is VY. When you see this, you have to think of the easiest way. You can use fine current all those, but we don't we don't really have a value of resistance. We only have the ratio. Ratio, did you say ratio? Mm, go try ratios of these potential divider thing. Go and refresh the unit two uh, videos about resistance and potential dividers a bit. But what we can do here is think about ratios, like I say. So your ratio Vy over the total potential drop across the whole thing, which is 12 volts, same as the battery, okay, V total, total potential drop, should be the same as the ratio of Y over the total ratio of, total resistance ratio, so Y plus Z law. So how to say Ry plus Rz, Ry plus Rz, or just say total. Yeah, cannot drop off, can, 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 total. This is using the ratio method to find potential drop. Because right? we they share share the potential drop ma. 12 volts, you take 3, I take 6, or however they share it. Now do we know any of these things? Mm, uh, maybe. Here hint is in the previous question if you got stuck on this one. From the previous question, Ry is 2RZ. So I can create values like Ry is 2 times bigger than Rz. So Ry, I can say it is 2R. I'll give you a resistance 2R. Can I? Can. You just create like R is just whatever. 2 times more, man. You only care about the ratio. 
then Z is just R. Lor. So two times of Z will give you R. That's what this thing is talking about. So yeah, we could find ratios if we know that. So now if I rearrange, Vy will be Ry is just 2R. Total one is 2R plus R. Because everything is in series, but multiply by 12. That's a 12 there. This is our shortcut ratio method. What to get? You will get 2R over 3R times 12. Thankfully, the R cancel out because ratio ma. So very convenient. No? So then you will get 12 times 2 divided by 3. 8. Eh? 12 times 2 divided by 3. Ah, yes. 8 volts. So that means the potential drop here will be 8 volts. That means this other Z share share get how much? 12 minus 8, 4 volts long. So you see how they share the voltage, how much voltage drop each one of them have depending on their resistance. This question's two marks. One comes from your ratio method and final answer, 8 volts. One last ratio on power. It's basically the same thing. Now you know your ratio and voltage. So I want you to go try it out, check the answer if you haven't. I'll tell you uh, the answer is 2. You will see whether you got 2 or only 1 mark, eh, so don't spend too much time. This one, question 3, was the one that's a bit tricky because you have to think about the ratio, the circuit, and all those kind of things. So yeah, once you get 3, 4 should be no problem. So go try out 4 for the end of this section. So that's all I wanted to show you for this resistivity section. Actually, got many more one, but not enough time to show you. Not the video will be five hours long. But anyway, this is the end of the first part. Uh, second part, you can really start trying out practice questions down below. There's so many because somehow CIE like to ask resistivity questions. So you will have lots of practice questions, but you will see they tend to repeat. It's either ratios or calculate or something, graphing. Uh, but there are some that are very tricky. And I'm going to talk about those in the next part of this video. So kind of like a bonus. So if you do some of it and you stumble across some very tricky ones, chances are they're in the next part of the video. So just watch the next part of the video first. Lah, if you want to level up and try very, very hard, very tricky questions. That's all for this one. Uh, go try out your questions on resistivity.